For more stories like these, go to www.social-tv.co.za, subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on our social mediums. Mercer When Women Thrive 2020 Sub-Saharan Africa report focuses on key areas such as advancing and retaining female employees and has actually shown progress over the past few years. The report also highlights that despite recent progress and achievements such as equal access to leadership roles in the workplace, there's still a lot more work that needs to be done. Now, on our social newscast today, we have a chat to Tamara Parker, who's Chief Executive Officer of Mercer South Africa. We unpack the stats. We take a look at why South Africa or Africa is doing far better than the global average of 79%. And we look at gender parity, equal pay, and pay equity. That's our social newscast with me, Sam Marshall. Tomorrow, let's quickly talk about your uh, Mercer uh, When Women Thrive 2020 Sub-Saharan Africa report. But according to Mercer, there is a definitely an increase in leadership roles. There's 94% of organizations in Sub-Saharan Africa. An actual fact, they lead the advancement of women in comparison to the global average. Talk to me about the, uh, this year's report. So first of all, Sam, I just want to give a caveat around the number of participants we had, um, which wasn't huge in comparison to the global numbers. And what we found was the people that did respond to our survey requests were often where they had female leaders already. So I think they were proud of their advancements and wanted to share that with everyone else. So the numbers and the, the percentages that we're giving are a representation of, this, of the survey we did, right, of the companies that responded to the survey. Nonetheless, um, I think that often in Africa, what we're seeing is because we come out of a period of colonialism and we had a, a move towards diversification of workforces, some of these things were legislated, right? And so in South Africa, for example, as you know, we've got um, legislation around economic um, um, equity um, in Rwanda, in Kenya, in a number of African countries, they have the same. And I think when it's legislated, it kind of drives behavioral change. There's a couple of issues that we have to talk about because we're having this conversation in Women's Month. And it's the perspective of gender parity, equal pay, and pay equity. How do you, in a report like this, look at those three issues when they're not similar issues? Because it's easy to talk about a female um, advancement, female leadership, but these three issues are a global concern. They're still being discussed at boardrooms, at regulation and policy level. Correct. So I think what we see happening in reality is that even when you have advancement of roles or advancement of women into leadership positions, they generally don't earn as much as their male counterparts, right? So in terms of, of parity. But we are seeing improvements in that regard. And I think what happens with organizations when you're looking at reward or compensation and benefits um, these things sometimes take time to to even themselves out because you need to have a program where you're building parity and pay. Um, it's not just one step change that would probably be too expensive for most organizations. But I think what we're seeing more and more is we're seeing pay transparency. Often we think we are being underpaid or we think that we are not um, equal to our male counterparts, when in reality it might not be true. And maybe before I ask you about the comparison between South Africa uh, or Africa and the rest of the globe, and we seem to be doing better, let me ask you just in terms of Mercer and why it's become such a big focus for you to look at this issue. Well, there's quite a few things that have driven it. Um, so, I mean, whether you talk about this year or years gone by, right, I think that as Mercer, we, we pride ourselves on on saying that we at the intersection of empathy and economics, right? So from an empathetic point of view, we know that women make up 50% of our society and therefore they should make up 50% of our organizations at the very least. From an economics point of view, there are many studies that show that the more diverse your workforce is, the better your um, economic returns, right? So um, McKinsey, for example, did a study a few years back to say that diverse workforces improve bottom line by as much as 15%. So 
So I think there's an economic reality in terms of having a diverse workforce. Of course, gender is only one element of diversity, um, but it's certainly something that we like to focus on from MRSA. Um, and we ourselves have been through a massive program of um, gender, um, you know, focusing on, on gender equality. Um, our global CEO is a woman, and we have many female CEOs around the world. This report comes, and I know it looks at leadership and it looks at gender parity, but it comes at a time when we've just seen horrible first quarter unemployment numbers. We've just heard the uh, report from the Statistician General talking about 3 million jobs being lost and the majority of that being women. Obviously, this report won't speak to that issues, but it does seem that the COVID period has hit women employees and women in the workspace harder than it has men. Correct. I mean, I don't have the numbers with me right now, but we also did a COVID-19 kind of survey across the continent to understand these issues. And it's true. Uh, COVID-19 has certainly impacted women a lot harder than it has men. Um, what the core reason for that is, I'm not sure, right? We always say to organizations, you need to figure out what the core issue is in terms of the why women are not getting employed or not getting promoted or not staying with your company. And those core issues are multifaceted, right? Um, so yes, women are generally excluded from the economy to start with. And then when there's recessions or, or periods of economic uncertainty, women seem to bear the brunt of it the, the hardest. The report also looked at equal access to opportunities. Um, mm. There's 56% have talent management practices in place for high potential women compared to 35% globally, which actually leads to this question. Africa seems to be doing far better than the global average. That's right. I mean, I think we also say, like, if you look at heads of state across the continent of Africa, I think Africa's had 11 or 12 women as head of state, either prime minister or president. Um, some were acting in maybe for a short period of time, but at least they had the role. Um, whereas if you look at the US, for example, they haven't had a single female president in all of their history. Um, so I think it says a lot about what does an open, modern, developed society actually mean um, when you're still, you know, choosing white men over, over everyone else. Um, whereas in Africa, I think there is um, an admiration for the qualities of female leadership. Final question. I mean, it, it's not just good news, right? I mean, the report doesn't just no. talk about it's all rosy. And where do you think as a, as a CEO, as a leader within the corporate space, there are still gaps that we, that policy can really step into, that some form of policing needs to happen in order to make sure that we fast track certain issues? I think, Sam, you have the carrot and the stick, right? And the stick is the kind of legislation that we have in South Africa, for example, which, to be perfectly honest, has not necessarily been effective, right? So despite, despite the fact that we report on gender equity, that it goes to a commission, um, which looks at all the statistics, and the report just came out, by the way, it's the Employment Equity Commission report. Um, that is one thing, right? That's one, that's one lens to look through. The second lens is around the fact that Diversity does not mean inclusion, right? So what we see often is that the numbers, you might check a box to say, I've got X amount of women in these various levels of my organization, um, but are they included in decision-making? Are, they, are their voices heard? And therefore, are you able to retain them? Right? So I think we sometimes see a churn, especially in, in very operational or manufacturing type environments. The third thing is that while we have seen parity in terms of the opportunities provided to women, the numbers don't match the opportunity, right? So it will take us probably another 10 years to reach parity in terms of a 50-50 split of men and women at different levels of the organization. And so I think what we need to do is appeal to organizations around the benefits of diversity. We have lots of examples in advertising, in the media, of faux pas by organizations saying things or putting out adverts which are offensive to groups of people in the community. Um, or in, in countries, and that leads to bad press, to decrease in, in revenue, et cetera, et cetera. So we need to appeal to the commercial parts of business to say, these are, this is the value. 
of the diverse workforce. Um, and as consumers, as we know, actually the majority of consumers are women. There isn't a 50-50 split in, in consumers. Um, and so how do you appeal to women consumers if you are an all-male organization making decisions by men for women? 